And we as an industry have defined the cloud, but still not have a clear definition of what a 5G network is. So how does cloud and 5G open up opportunities to make carriers, not just pipes, and what new services are to come from 5G? Here in the Dell TINL studio at TIA 2016 to tell us a lot more about these topics are Lindsay Miller, she's Vice President of Marketing at Artisan, Henry Wong, Senior Staff Technologist at Intel, and Ken Fisher, Senior Cloud Architect at Nokia, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I know you just came off a somewhat of a similar panel talking about cloud and 5G. We'll put a little bit of a spin <coughs> on it this time, and you've got some really considerable uh, uh, feedback from the audience during that, that panel. I'd like to really kind of delve into that. Um, Lindsay, I'm going to start with you again with a 60,000 foot question. Um, how does mobile computing play a part in cloud and 5G? Well, 5G has a lot of promises, which includes a lot more bandwidth to every user in the network. Um, and we also have the problem of how those users are going to get access to that in densely populated areas and especially indoor spaces. So Mobile Edge Computing is a Etsy uh, working group that has been um, really transformative to what 5G can do and what actually LTE can do even before that because it takes the IT uh, data center capability that is needed from the cloud and matches that with enhanced radio access infrastructure uh, base station capability into a decentralized cloud sort of topology. And so we are excited, in fact all of our companies have been working together on this and did some demonstrations at, at Mobile World Congress around this. And the session was great because we had, uh, we had a lot of feedback and uh, questions coming from service providers as well as universities that are looking to deploy this. You, had, uh, you touched on a little bit of uh, the definition or a clarification of the definition of cloud and what that is. Uh, Henry, I want to go to you on 5G. And uh, you said earlier in our pre-show discussion that it's not just about 5G. It's not just about latency. It's not just about these technologies, but really the, de the derivatives that um, lie in those layers beneath those technologies. What did you mean by that? Well, absolutely. Um, one of the things that people are, are enamored with and it becomes sexy is the the fact that 5G offers low latency. And that's all that gets talked about. It's the next version, if you will, of communications um, uh, for cellular and so forth. There are other aspects as well as the uh, sort of a waterfall effect associated with um, the, the build out that will uh, enhance people's ability to access, as Lindsay indicated, the uh, distributed computing model. Um, most folks will consider cloud being a, uh, a singular entity. It is not. It is a distributed architecture that uh, allows for uh, close proximity for uh, users to gain access to compute capabilities, storage capabilities, as well as even uh, considering um, privacy concerns and so forth. Um, all of that comes together along with this opportunity uh, that we call uh, 5G. Now, um, there are other aspects of 5G that is not just latency, which is uh, heterogeneity of the, um, of the uh, network structure. That allows for backward compatibility. It allows for um, uh, actually um, uh, compatibility not only with, um, with older technologies, but different technologies, whether it be Wi-Fi or, or others. Uh, allows for consolidation, optimization, and it actually delivers the promise of, of con uh, constant connectivity when it's needed. It delivers the goods and services when they're needed. Um, and it also offers a certain level of, of uh, security and privacy to maintain local um, uh, relevance to, or local context and relevance to the uh, applications. And are there differing opinions, um, and, and back really just, just to the 5G topic, are there differing opinions in the industry about who's actually going to pay for these networks? Uh, of course. Uh, I mean, obviously service providers who are using 2G, 3G, 4G technology today are uh, looking at this for, for certain deployments, but there's a lot of um, discussion about enterprises, uh, building owners, uh, uh, municipalities, cities, uh, f funding either jointly with service providers or 
uh, as part of an infrastructure build out in the cities to, to be able to move to this kind of infrastructure. Henry, you had a couple of pretty interesting analogies, again, in our pre-show discussion about <laughs> who the heck's going to pay for this stuff. Uh, what were those? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's similar to this concept of, of, um, of a utility. And, and um, no one, uh, you wouldn't expect a, 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 a transit carrier like a, a UPS or a FedEx to build their own freeways, right? That, that's unheard of. It is a, a utility, it's, a, uh, it's an access um, area that can be deployed across multiple services, if you will. Um, and it is similar to what uh, Ken was indicating in terms of, of it's a collaborative um, from a funding standpoint and from a capability standpoint to lay out that utility. Anytime that uh, we're digging up for, let's say, a water retrofit or a gas line fix and so forth, we should be laying down the communication network. That includes fiber, for example. And at that point, it's really the services and the service, and I'm using a generic term of service provider, not what we currently use as service providers, but we'll have those service providers, the application providers, actually feed into the cost of laying down that fiber, right? And it can be a collaborative with uh, city structures, building uh, manufacturers and so forth to actually equip these facilities as another utility. You wouldn't have a plumber come into your building to lay out new pipe mm -hmm. after you've already just built it, right? Um, you would put in the infrastructure available and whenever there needs to be a, a, a change for the older buildings and so forth, let's do it, right? That is part of that infrastructure. Lindsay, is the cloud and 5G uh, really a paradigm shift for service providers as far as monetizing their services? I think so. And I was excited actually in our session to hear uh, AT&T ask specifically about that because they have uh, the same observation that when we can take advantage of SDN NFE to bring down the cost of that mobile edge computing element in prep and for 5G, we actually can do some network slicing and offer new services as service providers that we couldn't before. And it becomes really interesting when you think about the indoor outdoor paradigm shift. So traditionally service providers, their network that they own has been outdoor. Enterprise have owned the indoor aspect, had to put in their own small cells, macro cells to serve their businesses and, and industries. But if they can actually buy that as a service now from a much more performant network that the service provider can offer, I think the B2B aspect is incredibly compelling and is going to be a very key way to monetize those services. Henry and, and Ken, I'd like to get your buy-in on this as well. Um, do, you, do you think that uh, there's still an existing myth that a pipe is just a pipe? pipe? <laughs> or is that just what it is, it's a myth? Um, or is it more of an enabler, as you described it, of new services? I think it's really an enabler, right? Um, it, and, and, the, and the type of pipe, if you will, is accept, is, has the ability to accept uh, different materials and keep them separate. Imagine, if you will, uh, a singular pipe that's big enough and capable enough of handling fresh water, sewage, everything else mm. along with it, mm. all in the same pipe, and then being able to separate it all afterwards. I mean, that makes the infrastructure much more efficient, makes the, uh, uh, the entire environment, as well as access to services, much easier. It depends on what your view of the services. Your analogy of the road is very good, right? We, we have roadways, FedEx, UPS, they're all providing a service on those roads, but so, so is Uber, so is uh, you know, other merchants who are, are, are shipping or doing things on it. And they, we think nothing of sharing those roads. It's gonna end up being like that in the access side for this. And who builds a particular road, whether it's city, state, county, private, all, all could be happening. Uh, the key will be to make sure they're all connected together uh, so we can provide end-to-end -end services. 
And is wireless uh, data transfer considered the least efficient way to transfer that data? If, if you're comparing it to, to transferring data inside a wire or inside a glass, sure. But um, it's the only way uh, to do it when people are moving around. So again, the mobile edge computing uh, technology like that to, to be able to quickly get the, the data uh, onto or on the network, then, uh, then transport it to where it needs to be done or compute it. Uh, you know, process the data uh, where it is and then pass it on uh, will improve efficiency. Well, that's an interesting point. Is that actually 5G really means more fiber. Because it's short distance, high, high bandwidth, high capacity, uh, low latency, and heter heterogeneity. Um, but it's local. And, it's, and what that forces is that uh, you're not traveling longer distances. It's faster to the wire. Uh, I've, I've indicated in other forums and so forth, um, and it, exactly that. Wireless is not the most energy at least efficient way of transmitting information, but there's a, a, a flexibility that's required from a mobility standpoint. How you marry the two happens to fit right in line with 5G, which uh, enhances the coverage, enhances the mobility, and gets down to fiber very quickly. And once you get into fiber, you can transmit that information to longer distances without the penalty of energy costs in terms of transmitting, decoding, retransmitting, all the, all the excesses and the waste associated with having to do that wireless communication. It, and that's actually been some of the biggest pain points that we face right now. And problems we have to solve for 5G are those very dense areas where you have a lot of users that are moving around mm -hmm. and you can't provision based on a static model. So you can't provision for a worst case scenario when a shopping mall is completely full because that would be very wasteful as far as equipment. And so we're looking for better models as far as less capex and less opex, less power to be able to move based on what the users need as they are moving around the network. And that's why NFE is, is, is a great impact for 5G because it means that we can actually virtualize the radio access infrastructure and take advantage of the in, improved performance of the cloud that we will have with 5G. So we often talk about cloud, we often talk about 5G, we often talk about cloud and 5G, but adding the mobile edge computing component to it it's an interesting topic. I'm sure we'll touch on it again. We don't have time right now to go further, but we appreciate all of you uh, being here um, and participating in the conference, but also here on the stage at TI now. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you for joining us for continued coverage of the Network of the Future Conference and the Dell TI Now studio. For more coverage, please visit tinow.org. So long.